Ok, cool. Du bruit. Yes. Ah, sorry. Okay. Okay, so they're the same. Yeah, that's the same. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> so why this? The contents? Okay. So what do we try to do? Uh, so first, why this workshop? Uh, some uh, technical uh, suggestion, how to organize, organize the disk, the package to use, how we organize the IDE, uh, a few considerations on application design, GUI app design. Uh, now we'll talk about localizing the application to make it available in the native language, you know, not only in English, but uh, in Spanish, in French, in German, in Chinese, with Japanese, with the right folks, whatever. <laughs> And then, how to build the application to deliver to the final user. So, why writing a GUI application with small talk? Uh, so there is a few good reasons, we all know them. We can make the application uh, more easily portable, or for maybe web applications are easier nowadays. You can do working prototyping, testing ID, explore local new concepts, even in the way of presenting the the UI to the user. We can learn from the environment itself how the 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 sort of algorithm results the user interface, so we can learn from that easily. There is this this culture uh, of design patterns in, uh, in Swalto. A culture of tasting, how to have multiple environments. And one of the most important things is that hunting bug is sunk with Swalto. And before doing Swalto, I was doing C. It was not so. <laughs> but with Swalto, it became Funny. Mm -hmm. Maybe a pleasure. <laughs> so, why uh, why doing GUI application with quiz small talk? In, okay, with small talk, you know, but with quiz, why? Uh, one of the first reason for me is that uh, quiz small talk ensure the four the four freedoms as defined by the Free Software Foundation. So the, the freedom to run it where we want, the freedom to study or to modify it, the freedom to di to distribute copying of it, or the freedom to modify and distribute copying of it. So that's the four freedoms that make a free software. Uh, next the reason for me is that the quiz will talk is uh, simple enough so that we can uh, we can understand more easily how their system is running. So it's always a good thing is when you want to, de to develop uh, a graphic user interface. Uh, next good reason that we have a walk of the morph version three, which is a little bit uh, version two was quick uh, and version one was self. So it simplify or make many points right in this uh, in this uh, third implementation of morph, um, we have the vector graphics engine, especially if you want to make some uh, funky uh, widgets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why this workshop? Um, I was not sure that there will be many people, so uh, I also 
think about to like this also uh, documentation for the community to the so that it can be used later by more people. So this is the for me this is a bottom freedom. So we will show it shows step by step using these slides, even if I'm not there, how to what is the main components when building an application, uh, to explain how to organize the code, uh, to think about what's the difference, how is structured uh, a GUI application, which package we can use, the, the design cocktails to, uh, to, to use as well. So how to write your own widget, this I will not have the time to show, but I will show you maybe some uh, custom widgets. Then which resources to use, I gave at the end of the slide, there is a few links that may be useful. Maybe not for you, but for other people that will look at this document later. So this is the example we will uh, build. This is an image viewer. And you can make some basic operation to, to scale, to rotate, to flip. On you have the ability, of course, to load an image, and you can, you can undo or redo the operation. So we'll see this example, we show how to do all that kind of things. So that's a report. I'm going to cut it. So from scratch, I'm using Google Linux, but okay, you need to adapt. I think from macOS, it's must be the same, you know? In Macintosh, you have uh, the bash scripts. Yes. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so it should be exactly the same. So Windows, maybe, okay, you need to adapt to the Microsoft shell. So you, you start with an empty, with an empty Directory, yeah. Summer get you updated by on Windows. I have a thing is done, and that gives you a tiny share icon that is okay. Please, yeah, share it out with us. I guess so. Maybe this is an information I, I could add later. So, in this record, in this folder, this is not a repository. This is where you, you would put the necessary piece to develop your application. So the first thing you will have, this is the quiz repositories. So the one from the community. Okay, uh, you don't need to, this information, you can find them on the quiz website. Okay. I just write out, I just write this thing there. If some people like so, they, they they see the page. So the first thing to do is just to clone the repository of quiz water in this uh, in this my project folder. That's just the basic thing to do. It should be quite loud, I don't know, but uh, the dev the dev to run this should limit the uh, the amount of data that is searched. But with the with Wi-Fi we are there, I'm, I'm not sure we can do that anyway. So when you have done that, you need to close. Well, I don't, I don't know why you want that. Clone package repo, what is it? Uh, one? Oh, it's people. Oh, one, I'll wait here. You got me. Oh, one, yeah, the other work was in the white, didn't it? Hey, hey. Okay, so this is just French additional package. So I just copied this from the quiz website, so you can find interracial uh, directly. So I put a link there. This is uh, at the end of the document, you have the link where you have the original information. Okay. Next, you need to fetch a virtual machine. Okay. We get your system running. So again, I took this information from the quiz website. So still in your project, maybe if you have an old machine, you can remove it. Then, okay, you just get the latest one. So, so okay, just rename. 
the folder name of the GL. Okay, that's it. So when you are there, you should be able to start squeezing. So here, this will be the version number at the time when you clone the repository. So you, you should have a running quiz engraved. Okay, the next step is to, uh, to think about the package we want to use. So there is an additional repository. Then again, in this repository, you will clone them in the queue sort of dev folder. So this is a repository for UI. This is a SVG. Okay, to be able to load icon. But this is Wolverine's package. Uh, it is made by SVG. So, the backend are fine with this extension. So now we have installed an additional extension we want to use for other people. Of course, this will be done later when we think, oh, maybe I need this, I will install it. So always we do that. We do that in the... Uh, no, I said something wrong. Uh, uh, we didn't. We do not close them in the quiz mode of them uh, folder, but in one cut in the my project folder. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. For the application, we want to that up. So we have to pick up a repository. So quiz is agnostic. So, for example, for Dr. Geo, I use another repository. So, anyway, we do that. Uh, we, we clone the repository we have created, the empty repository we have created for, your, for our project. We clone it in the queue sort of their folder. So, here, for example, we can just clone the existing repository for the quiz app example for the workshop. Okay, now I will discuss about the folders. How for my for the Tajiro, for example, I organize my folders or my file. This is purely arbitrary, but this is my choice, but we can do it differently. So in my repository, I would just create three folder for the source, for the localization, and when to build the application. Then... It looks like those are already in the repository. Yeah, yeah, it's on set. Oh, okay. You don't need to do anything. Just enjoy, just enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah, it's all set. Um, so, an additional is with the resources. What kind of resources we need for your application? So, I have graphics and icons, and also documentation. So, now in quiz, in quiz workspace, now I start, I'm starting quiz, just the fresh one. What I, I'm just discussing, so now this is a bit a side note, I'm just discussing the, uh, the quiz package. So uh, what we can do, because we download the, uh, the UI reposit repository, we can install this package. You see, this one is a Mecca, like in Debian, it's like a Meta package. It's a reference to other packages. So it will just lowest uh, alternative packages. So if you feature required this package, you will see a lot of installation going on. So this is just for testing. If you open the, the package manager, 
So you can go on the world, open, install a package menu. You will see the package we got installed. But there are the So regarding the package for or all the inst uh, or all application, there is different way to do it. We can do it programmatically, or we can be, do it with the UI with the, with this uh, with this windows. We can create a new package, and we can call it choose qu uh, quiz app. This time I did it differently. I did it with code. I never did that before, but I wonder, okay, can we do it with code? So we can just see what is going on. So package, the best class is code package, you give the name. So the name is very important because it means that uh, the, the, the class in this category, they will become part of this package. Then you can add to this package feature spec. Feature spec are requirements, which mean a package you want your application to depend on. So there is SDG, UE couples, goodies, this is for a additional facility, and get text, this is to localize. So these two packages, they are part of the base uh, quiz repository. So we don't need to install them. They are all. When we clone the quiz slot of repository, we got this one. Then we make a package sale. Okay. We could have done the same thing from the UI, and it's quite easy to do. And at any time, if we depend from some additional package, we can add them here. It's important to add the requirements so that when we just load our package, this requirement will be automatically installed. So we don't need to, to have a big list of uh, package requirements. So uh, if you want to create a first class, just in a classic browser, we can create a quick app an application, and we, by just selecting the category as quiz app, it will be part of the package of the deck and show. So this is a quiz app category, then, okay, each row, each class in a category with quiz app prefix will be part of the package. But how the selection of packaging of the class going to the package is done. There is also an additional um, information to be aware of. And that if you are extending um, other classes, the method need to be in the category prefix with the star, you know, the classic stuff, star on beginning with grease up. So this means that this the method in this category, even if they are not in the class in this category, they will be part of the, uh, of the package. I think in the example I have here, we, we don't have the situation. So when we have saved the package, it produces a file that we then, this file we move it in the quiz app source 
for them uh, or location. Of course, if you look at the repository, it's already there, okay? I already put that. But if you start from scratch, this is what you will re do, okay? So here we just have create an empty quiz app package. If we, we start quick and we do that feature required quiz app, you will search for this uh, package in a few for we search recursively in the folder on the image. Then you will install also the dependency. So I can do it. I can show you what is at the moment. So this is what is happening. All the dependent package are installed. So it can be quite a, a lot of package because maybe you 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 require four package, but if each of these package require four additional package, uh, then it become a big important. Okay, so this is finished. So this is the ba the basic. Okay, this is just the basic the basic setup. But we are not good yet to make uh, development in a proper manner, at least for me. So the next things to do the next things to do to do uh, I suggest is to organize uh, your code elements for working your IDE, so to make it fresh on something that you can every morning it I start it and get ready to work. So what we want for an IDE, what I want, that's my personal taste, uh, I want to use a fresh uh, crease image that I will update with the latest updates, of course. Um, this image, I will keep it, this original image, I will keep it untouched so that's thing, I will only have read access to this image. I will, this thing that I will work with cookie and make some of the bit that I can work or do what I really want. And I will install an uh, additional package, the package I need for my work. And I will adjust the screen layout with the windows I want, the browser I want, the workspace I want, uh, as I need. So, uh, this is a small bash script. It is in the repository. So we, we just search for the latest image. We don't need to care about that. It will just clean up previous uh, session. It will make a copy of the image. Then it will start script with a starting script here. We have a small startup script. So the, all the job to customize the image will be done in this script. Okay. Well, we not go in the detail of the. I'm not going the detail of this setup IDE dot uh, script. It's a bit technical and there is some consideration to take care, but you can use it as a Canva if you want to change something and uh, adjust it to your test. Uh, what I can do is, is to show you how you will do every morning or every afternoon or evening. Uh, no. So the script is in the repository. Starts. Starts. IDE. So it takes a fresh image, 
install uh, the requirement for my uh, for my work. The package I need to to uh, to install to develop my application. So you see the same stuff we saw previously. So doing that, doing that way, you are sure to start with a with a fresh relation. Then you will. I did like that. I keep a tool script, but I don't need a, a big tool script from script windows. Uh, I often in a three browser. Uh, which one uh, here? This browser is open in one of my uh, class of the application I'm developing. Or the other one that just opened and there were no additional instructions. The workspace, I like the workspace to have some dark snippets I use often and I just get boring to keep copying copying them after. So I wish I also set up this in my install uh, script. So I still a few a few a few uh, instructions I need to execute from time to time. For the Geo, the list is just is very longer. So yeah, we're ready to work. Yeah. Oh, the side. Okay. So, so this is what we just saw before. Okay, so now we look more in real work. So app, app design, design pattern. So there are a few design pattern we can introduce. Uh, the first one is a well known, is an NDP or NDC, they are mostly the same uh, way of uh, presenting a like, GUI. So the main idea is to uh, Yeah, the main idea of NDP is, is, the, is that the model, the model does not know about the view. Okay, so there is no connection. So it's completely decoupled. So you can change the view, the model does not care. So it is the main idea, or we see details. The strategy is a way to present uh, different uh, implementation when you are when the, your software will run on different platform, where I don't. And then uh, I will show the command, uh, the command pattern to do undo do, do operation. So that the three pattern that will be used in instrumentation. Uh, recommend reading. Yeah, we have a few books that we, they are really worth reading. I mean, uh, if you want to read only one book. In computer science, the Zyphatos is, I think, this is where you will get more users. In Dr. Joe, I had a few more uh, uh, design patterns. For example, factories. I use factories to, uh, when I build, when the user uh, constructs a new uh, a new mathematic object, it first goes in a factory just to check if there is not a duplicate an object of the same nature already exists. Uh, I have the tools, the tools pattern, so tool and states. So this is to manage the different mouse operation with several steps to build an object. So this is done with this pattern. So this will make quite a lot of objects. And then the builder. When the user select enough information, this information are provided to builder to build the final model. We don't need that for an example. So in the MVP, this is what I just, just said before. So we have the model. It doesn't know about the view of the presenter as well. The view, it display the... It gives a view to the model, but also it... He has the, the control or the button or the interaction. 
But in the APP, what is done is that uh, the action, they are, they are sent to the presenter. The view does not, uh, the, doesn't take care of, the, of clicking on the button. This is, done, this is given to the presenter. But the presenter is the entry in the application. So how do we translate this in code? So the domain, the domain is a model, okay? So I call it app domain. Okay. So what do we need to know about for a file viewer? Okay, we just need a file entry. We could have, we could have done without a domain or just say, oh, let's, let's the file entry be our domain. That would be enough. Uh, yeah, that would work, but then we will have some problem if, for example, we want to present a meaningful name <coughs> for the file entry, you know, just the, the just the, the the file, the file name without uh, the path, without the extension. So we will have a problem if we want to do that. So you can see no attributes on the on the view. So the domain is in the table. Then we have the view which is a, a system window. So it knows about the presenter or the image. So the image is not, it's not the subject, it's something else that we see. Then finally, the presenter. So I, not, I did not call it presenter, I just call it app, because I, I say this is the entry, po the entry point on the application. So it knows about the domain, Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't know about the view uh, because I use another object which is a control manager. It's, a, it's a, an object I use to just to make the detail of the view, the details of the button, to keep the complexity out of the view so we don't have too much complexity. And if we decide to change the control manager, for example, to have ones with a different way of presenting the toolbar, so we just need to subclass it, or it's easier, or we don't need to change the view itself. Then we have the command manager. So the command manager would be the one to uh, manage the undo and redo stack. So let's look at the presenter, what is going on. So this is the first object that is instantiated. When we want to create the application, we just create an instance of this object. So he has quite a, a few responsibility. So we, he will create the, the model first. He will create the control manager. He will ask it to install the app so to install the button on the toolbar, for example. He will set up the command manager. Then he will open the view. So here the view is not a direct call. Uh, in fact, it just just a message to ask to the control manager what is the deal. So when we're in the control manager, so there is a bit more uh, annoying detail because we are we are diving in the in the real construction of the UI. So you know, that's for the boring stuff. So this is very specific. Here we have very specific morph uh, morph code. So okay, we create the view with this model. Then this is a scroller to be able to scroll the image. <coughs> uh, to this scroller, we 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 ask it that the the contents will be the image morph from the view. This is the image attribute we saw earlier. This one, see, see the gilt? Yeah. What are the two So, two common is to avoid the parentheses. So, if you want, they are not, uh, in fact, here they are not necessary. This is like having one parenthesis there or the one there. Uh, here you can remove them. They are not useful. So then we, we, to this view, we add the toolbar with a specific layout. 
So we have a fixed A, well, the details for in that code. So. Then we have the scroller to the D. Okay. So we just construct the, the window, the picture I showed you uh, just before, uh, with the, the toolbar on the, the picture of the keys. Um, so we have the toolbar here. So how is the circuit toolbar? So what I do uh, for the toolbar, it's just a layer cloth. So it's a, just a row with separation of five pixels. Then here I iterate over the tool. I will show you what is it. It's a collection of symbols, in fact. So for the space, you know, I, ju I just use some space in the, in the, in the horizontal toolbar. And then here, I just restrict the button. So here, this is the size lights out uh, in the control manager. So each, each tool is described with a small collection. Like it could not be done with the latex, okay, but this is just a collection of symbols. So each one, they represent something. So the first one is a label, the icon name, the callback. So this is the name of the message to be to call to send to the presenter or the description. There are nothing very complicated. So okay, here again. So this is the implementation of the method we see here. So when the button on this method receives a tool, a description like this, so it just does these boring things. You need to let to care about the details. The only thing to observe is that uh, the model of the button is the presenter. I told you earlier that, uh, that it will be the presenter that will manage the action of clicking on the button. So this is what we, that we, we do here. So here, oh, maybe I can talk about these two points. Yeah. It's, this syntax will avoid us to write the parentheses here. So it, it makes the writing a, a bit less uh, of, a, of a challenge. So, so you see set button text, we use the, the fourth, which is just the help string in the structure the, or so. Oh, the icons, oh. Yeah, and maybe the icons I will tell you later. Okay, but so now we have this. Uh, so, so here, okay, this is the, the description of the open button data. On the callback is the, the third one, this is open email. This means that open image should be a method in the presenter class, right? Because the model of the button is a presenter and the message will be sent to the bottom of the, of the button. So here, yeah, this is what is happening. So this is the presenter and we have the open, oh, I forgot what, the open image uh, made up. So what it does? Okay, this is, uh, this class can come from the, uh, the goodies package. It's just a simple, uh, just a simple list of a file on the given folder. Yeah. So this is just to select a file, nothing special. So, okay, if the answer is not nil, okay, what we do, we just update the button. Makes sense, right? So the domain, we will just change the file entry. Then we will build the full path to the selected uh, to the selected uh, picture. The here, okay, we we set the the undo and redo stack. That's normal. If we load a new image, we don't want to undo operation on the new image, right? It makes sense. We should open a new document. The undo and redo stack will be must uh, be void. Okay, so that's it. 
but uh, there is a missing piece because I just tell the domain, okay, this is my new file, the new picture I want, but we know the domain knows nothing about the view. So how the windows is updated? So this is where we have this uh, this pattern, the, the observer pattern. So this means that uh, the, the, the system window, the, the view, the application must observe if something new happens on the model. So you see where we will look. Uh, we will uh, send even. So, well, oh, here we are in the DOM. Okay. So the file entry, we see the message. Okay. Yeah. So we update the file entry. Okay. Oh, very obvious. Then the next thing we, we do, okay, we just announce the world. Okay, uh, I have a new image that has been selected. If anyone wants to do something with that, they can. I don't care. So this means that, okay, with the view must be aware of that. The view must listen to what is happening. So when we initialize the view, we just from it that when uh, we trigger the new image selected, we will send the message load image to send. To. So when we say in NDP that the view, uh, the domain does not know about the view, in fact, we are lying. You understand that? Because at some point, somewhere deep in the, uh, in the model, we say here the domain, okay, you have to do something. But okay, this is a bit I guess under the curtain. Uh, what is interesting is that if there is several of you that want to listen to this uh, model, they can listen at the same time. So for example, if you want to have also a miniature, a miniature picture or something like that, we will add another view that we listen to the domain. Or it will be done independently of the domain. So the domain just need to trigger the event. And the interested view to get notice about the change on the file, they will just say, okay, I want to be on the list of the people that listen to what is happening. So now we need to look at load image, what is happening. So we go to see in the view. So in the app view, we have the load image. On here, we have again some low-level operation. Okay, and the image is a morph. Our image is just to change the form of the of the of the morph. Okay, we write the uh, matter. Okay, that's problem stuff. Then we update with real Oh, okay. This was this is this in a. Uh, this is part of Chris actually, because the view is um, is a system window. Our system windows of the listen to the model. But when uh, when this uh, uh, the is sent, this updates uh, either is sent, the view will send will send um, as here the appropriate uh, message to. Uh, we name the label on the top of the window. Okay, maybe maybe we we take a look. So we are in the toolbar. Okay. This is the default image. Okay, maybe we should have another one. Okay. So I click there. Can see here? the name of the, in the title, we get the name of the file. 
This is why So this is why we need a, an additional model. We can't just have the fire outreach. We need an additional model. So why did we send the update lab message to the view? And the model will trigger an event say to the view that you need to uh, update the state of with this method. It's a big difference because it's a, it was an older pattern of uh, data balancing. So the observer pattern is, is nice, but it's not always uh, good for what kind of situation, especially if you have a lot of objects. This is okay for uh, for the, the usual uh, control you have on the on the, and the UE, the UI. Um, but for example, in Dr. Geo, I have for the, for each object you see there, this is a view. For example, like this, this red cycle, this is this view. Then you have a model. So I could say, okay, that's good. So I can just, uh, when the model change, I just uh, trigger the events. And do like that. But the problem is that in Dr. Joe, when you drive one point, maybe behind there will be uh, one object object that would need to be updated. And it will make the system very slow. So in that situation, we do a uh, different thing. So this is really for the for the UI, the UI level, high level. So now we will discuss about the command, the undo and redo operation. So maybe I will show you uh, first how it's here. So the idea is that you can read undo what you what you do. For example, if I I zoom, okay. I can undo, and if I scale out, if I do that, you will see that I, I, I lose the quality of the picture because unzooming was destructive. Nevertheless, the undo operation should able to get back to the initial state. So this is what what should do the undo or do. So I will show you, this is, there's a few steps that's very complicated. So what, what, what are the objects we need? We need a common manager. So this is, we will ask the common manager to do, to execute the common. We need the stack where we will have the, the different undo, uh, the, the, the different command. Then we have one type of command per type of uh, operation we want to do. Then in each command, we have two important methods, which is execute, then unexecute. So let's observe with the word say it's right, pull back. So here we have the presenter. So remember the button would send the the, the command to the present. Uh, the button will send the command to the presenter. So what I tried is the file in the presenter. What it does? Uh, he asks the command manager, rotate right. I want the command to rotate right. So let's look at the rotate right ma command manager. It's those. Okay, we create a new rotate command with some information. It said we add it to the stack. Then it say, oh, 
how do you know to rotate right or right or left? So, and the right appeared to be plus 90 degree. Well, it could have been Venus, but it's plus. Then, finally, because we want some effect, we execute it. So now we have to look what is happening when we execute the command. Okay, so let's look. Uh, again, this will be low level boring command. Okay, so this is where the stuff is really happening. So, image morph. So, image morph is just one method that is defined in the, in the command ERT. Okay, so we change the image, the form of uh, what we do. We will take by degree. And again, here we will just fetch from the view the we fetch from the view the the initial form. I will show you the details if you want after that. Uh, what should do the unexecute command? For this should do the opposite. So you would change again the the image loss. But you will rotate in the other direction. Okay. So we can do that in this example. We can do that because rotating in the one side or the other side is not destructive. We are not destructive information. Uh, but if we are zooming, uh, maybe we need to do a bit differently. So if we we have the zoom out command, oh, okay, we have no choice. We have to keep a fresh copy of the image morph before it's modified. There, yeah. we keep it fresh. Then we modify it. So when we un-execute, it's, it's a bit simpler. So we just get back the cache form. So this is the idea of the camera. Execute, un-execute. Okay. Until we pay the best. So next step, if you want to have uh, the message in local in local language. So this time we we need to use two two package. One package is the get text package, and the other one is the system locals. So this will ensure that. Uh, System locals, we just um, see what is the, the default language of your computer. We will get, it will give you this information. There is a lot, there is a plugin that, uh, by the way, uh, for that in the VM. So you, you need this package, then get text, you manage the catalog of, of translation you have for your application. And then it will pick up the right one depending on the system accounts. So what do you need to do at the application level uh, if you want to manage that? For every string you want to be in local language, you just need to add an additional message. You just need to send a message translating. That's the best. If there is no catalog of translation, it will change nothing. So next, we need to tell uh, to the get text system. Okay, where are where are the messages I want to translate? So we say, oh, you search. Search in the class that are in this category. Like for the packaging. Uh, we give a, an arbitrary name. So we call it this quick app domain because we can have several domains in one application. If you are an application with class coming from different category. But that's it. So the next thing, once we have said uh, where are the message, we ask the system to export that file.
This is the get text export export template. So it will create for us the file in this directory. It will create all this thing. So PO, PO, another why PO, but that's an extension file called the message catalog. This is our domain. Oh, this is the collection of the file to to translate. I can show you very soon. So the right one. So maybe we we'll need to do that. Like the trip tower. Uh, like sports. Okay, so you can you see I've got an edition of a folder. So it's look like this. Here there's a new one. It should be UTF I don't know why. Yeah. Uh no, here you don't need to change, let's go on. But when you translate, you need to change this. So we have all the the fact, the message. This is all the message that were marked with the translate. Uh, uh, this is all the string that were marked with the translate uh, message. Not that much. So when we have this file. Uh, you keep it, uh, so what I do, we need to keep it. We need to keep it because it will be, over time it will change. So we, you may have more message to, to translate. So what you do, you copy this in your, uh, in, in the hierarchy we set up. So in the quiz app, I, so internationalization and in the folder local, you copy it there. So if we want to translate in Spanish, we copy again this file uh, with this uh, name and extension, the importance, so the language, then uh, the extension PO, then you can translate it. So this look like this. So, you can see the thing didn't really turn it pretty this. So you go to look, uh, we go to our quiz app. Uh, so in PO we have, so this is the catalog of messages to translate. Then, okay, I did for French, I did that for Spanish. Okay, so you just need to add Hello. Each message ID. The English will be the ID, in fact. And uh, below, we will write the translation. 
Uh, observe here, we need to change to UTF ID. I'm not sure this will be a problem, but I mean, when I was using Emacs to edit, he was complaining. Maybe for quiz it will be fine. I'm not sure. Well, so what is good if you need the context, if you need to know the context, here you have the class, then you have the method name where this, this uh, string appear. It can be useful or not. Okay, so you just do that for all the, for all the message. You want to be in, you want to be translated. Now you look for an image viewer, there is quite a few. Huh? However, this uh, file will not be the file that we load in quiz to get this localizer. They need to be combined, right? We so that works fine for stability static strings. But suppose you have a string that has something embedded in it. Yeah. The structure would be different in different languages. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So in this case, in this case, you, what I do in the tattoo, I don't have an example on here, by the way. I should have had one. Um, you use macro. Uh, so I don't remember exactly, but this is a good question. You will have uh, in your code, uh, you have a say it will be where they were that. But we're going to check with the Tokyo so they are more available. So what should I do? Uh, uh, it's not the best one, but okay. You will use insert plug points in your in the string. So now, so I'm pretending this is all. Yeah. So we mark this like that. Okay. Then. So if you need to move this one first, we need some slaves to do that. That one. So this this text file will be will not be the file format to reuse. Uh, increase. In fact, you need to combine them. 
So this is what the, the updates, the, the build locals will do. So we create a new, for this in the script that would do that. There we can check it out. So you would just use a shell command of the get text software in, uh, in Edux. Uh, I don't know if, like, if you can do it directly, not. So we just compile in a specific file in the specific directory. So this means that your uh, translation catalog will be organized that way. See. See the extracted uh, hierarchy for get text file for French? Okay, where is the catalog of the message? So when you need to build the, the final application, you need to decode this in the hierarchy. We will see that later. So okay, this is what he explained. Uh, so when you when you develop your application, you have to to add a new button, new interactor with some new labels, with new descriptions. So this thing that your catalog will grow. So in this case, I mean, we, you will get a updated version of this file. Then you copy in your source in your source repository in your I18L repository, then you have a, the update script to do that. So you would the update PO will update your already translated message and you will add at the end the additional message that need to be translated. So for the Geo I am using the Bazaar repository and the launch file that service because they are so bizarre is like gits or a launch file that is like github um, in the launch file website is it there on the ubuntu foundation they have a service for the translator they can go and translate online the this do file for this an easier to get a uh, contribution from people so that's why i am i am maybe telling uh, translation of the Pergeo. Okay, we are already there. So the final step is to make the bundle, to make the final, uh, the final application we can install uh, for the user, for the final user to, to make it install. So what I do, I am again, a bash strict which those two things it can build the image and then it can build the package so that the same image will be used for Linux Windows before I have uh, Mac voices I will have it work uh, because they, I was not able to build the package there was some <clears throat> security with signing I, can, I, I cannot do but I think I will do it differently so we can check out where the screen was stolen. So the make bundle script need to be executed from the from the the quiz motor dev folder because you need to use an image from there. So we need to just access clip to our so build folder, then we have the make, make bundle. Okay, so I need to have the appropriate action that I want to build. 
Okay. So he will do mostly the same things as building the IDE, but then maybe he will do some additional cleanup. Um, he will not install the browser windows or the thing like that. I don't remove anything from quiz. And used to do that before, but it was always some trouble. Or I prefer to let me keep it as it made it. Play it easy. Okay, so the, the image the image is built. So the image is there is just this file up image. So we have quite some feedback, which is useful when we, I mean, we don't do something right. So we have a different state of what is happening. So next we can just ask to be the bundle. For change. <laughs> the only works. Worker is done, so maybe we just use the the file browser. The main, I mean, yeah. Great of that. So we have the bundle of bundles folder. So we have the archive. We can upload the git to someone. Then she's working inside. So we have the start, the start script. You have your information, some dog with me license. So, so the VM is there. The resources, we find the icon. So it's the SDG, this is vectorial icon. All the image is there. And we find the local Roomba. Yeah. So the build strip take care of putting together all the all the necessary information. Okay. So there's nothing special. I did not change the menu, the thing like that. So there's no much change. But I can find my application. You walk. Use the interface. I'll do. Yeah. Here we go. And you can observe it's in French. The title also is in French. Oh, and this little space here. We'll get your work. But here as well. So from the same image, we can make, of course, the windows. Bundles. I'm not sure if it's working. I can. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not in Windows. <laughs> So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. When you have all the elements in, in places, it's not too much work to make a new release or to update a release that makes you are well organized. Uh, what I do for just a piece of, just for me to be, uh, just have a copy of the VM on the repository as well, yeah. But that's, uh, that's just a personal choice. So when I just search or clone the repository, I have everything. Yeah? Can you make the application start when, when they even start? Because we have to choose to go the block of the application. Yeah, you can do that. So okay. Yeah, you can do that. You can do, you have the, 
you are what we call the startup sequence. I'm not sure, yeah, I think that they do. Or you can maybe better, you can, like uh, I do for Dr. Joe, uh, I change the world on you. I have my own entry. We can do that as well. So, because maybe you want to have several choices. You can remove the taskbar if you want. You can change the color of the background if you want. Make another image or nothing. We can do that. Yeah. So, for example, I will show you uh, for the language, but I would show my keyboard. Well, you, you want to test in the, another language, how will you do that? You just need to tap the system, okay, now I'm using this language. Let's say German. So for example, here, uh, you see the picture. So that's in the startup. Uh, okay, so what we have in German. So what I do for, for non-European language, I use, a, I use a, an internet fault. So there is another, another fault which is much larger, so it takes some time to load. Fred, she's a, uh, okay. So you can see the Korean translation is not complete. Is it? So I already talking to my budget. So I, I mostly finished. Uh, so let me I, I can show you a little about the widgets we have in the quiz uh, smart uh, smart up UI, UI repository. I try to write examples for each of this one, so you'd be it's easier to get up the link up there. Uh, is it big enough? Is it big enough? The... Can you see clearly the characters that are big enough? Okay. Uh... What is the key folds? Beautiful fold size. Is it that? No. Look there. So big. Come to the. Too big. Too big. Okay, so we go to the UI category. Okay, the funny one. Oh. Okay, with first search. So we are check button, or the other button, and we are the example. So let me first that for the birds.
Word, yeah. It's in yeah, yeah. Okay. So to see you, but he, if you just check my turn. So it's the button with the drop down menu. I did that in Dota Geo when I want to select the color. This is the same thing, but we feel we know. For a few more widgets, is the a widget for the sickle toolbar. This one will be a sub toolbar. So the with no person is and what it was and we will play preview. This is what they do in the dojo when do you the, the kids want to open the new fire. Uh, level board. This one is very useful. Mm. Because this is so common. You have an uh, input widget, then you want to, to set a level. This is not the things you want to do by hand. You know, this, you want a tool to do that for you. A white stainer, the white most. This is come from Squeak. Well, this pressure has frozen. Uh, we are made. So I don't have it. I don't have it simple. Uh, the sure there is all the widget. There is some whistle working in the clip. So that this is a place where, yeah, the people that are working on this field and see they design some additional widget they want to share, that's a place to, to set up what. Inside the 